Welcome to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. Oh, well, he's very popular. And today it's Macro Monday. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Where we show you the big picture and how you can take advantage of it. Show me the money! And now, the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit on ESPN Radio 1700. It is that time again. It's Monday on this Macro Monday Infamous Credit Show. It's JJ Synergy One Lending in the hot seat on this Monday. And thank you for taking the time out of your day to uh, check us out here. We uh, always bring you a great panel. And um, we have a special guest today. And I'm pretty excited to have this guest in the studio because we're going to talk about a lot of things that we normally don't talk about. Most of it's tied to the real estate market, and um, these are just things that they're not your normal basis to talk about. We're not going to talk about inventory. Uh, Maybe we will. I don't know. But these are things that you don't want to miss, and it's it's definitely going to make you smarter um, to check this out. And um, our special guest today is Barb Fisher. How are you doing, Barb? I'm just great. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be here. I know coming off the weekend sometimes in the real estate game... Mondays are a busy day, and it's not easy to just get away for a couple hours in the middle of the day, so thank you. Um, You've laid out a lot of good topics for us to talk about today, and I'm very excited because, you know, sometimes you get in this stagnant sort of thing. You're talking about the same things over and over. Obviously, the news keeps us on our toes because people are writing different articles, but this is stuff that everybody should want to know about, especially when it comes to buying, selling, and just some of the things that there are do's and don'ts, um, which you can and can't control, and just what what to expect even from your real estate agent. And for the first segment, we have a special guest because we are going to talk about golf. And um, I've had the privilege of golfing with this gentleman a couple times, I think, two? Two. Yeah, two times. And uh, he might as well be on the tour. I mean... Tim Garland. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. Thanks for having me, Judge. I'm not, I'm not quite that good. Uh, yeah, I think you are. I think if you play it every day and put your mind to it like the pros can do, um, I think you could compete. I'd love, I'd love to have that opportunity. So if, one, you, if you want to create that for me, I'm, I'm open. <laughs> one day, we might have to create that because it'd be kind of exciting to, to see. So, you know, Tim, here's, here's the deal. I don't know. You were probably playing golf yesterday, but I don't know if you saw... The, uh, the championship this weekend? Uh, I, I didn't miss a single swing of it yesterday. Okay. All right. So, Barb, are you a golf fan? I, I like to watch it, definitely. Yep. Did you yes. watch any golf this weekend? No, I didn't. No? no? Okay. Well, it was a major championship this weekend uh, called the PGA. And um, a young man, and uh, what is he, 25, Rory McIlroy, he's, uh, he's the guy that's stepping up now. He's taken over in my mind, taking over the top seat. Um, You know, Tiger Woods has been at the top of the food chain in the golfing world for sponsorships, for winning. And um, this guy is just playing awfully well. Um, Three wins in a row, right, Tim? Three? Two majors in a row and a World Golf Championship thrown in the middle there just for fun. I mean, that's a solid solid, uh, trifecta for this kid. And I'm calling him a kid because he is a kid to me. Um, I mean, he's 25. So, Tim, what do you think? I mean, is it is Tiger? I mean, obviously he's had some back problems. Um, he pulled out a few weeks ago. He came, tried to play, missed the cut. I mean, is is it time to move on from the Tiger Woods talk? I guess it depends on what camp you're in. I'm a big, big Tiger Woods fan. Always have been. I don't think anybody out there really isn't a Tiger Woods fan uh, just because of everything he's done for the game. Yep. And uh, on a side note, I think every person on tour should have to scratch Tiger a check at the end of every season <laughs> <laughs> just because of the amount of money that he's brought to the tour. Um, I looked back in 1996, I believe it was, when he turned pro. That previous year, I think there was one or two players on tour that had a million dollars in earnings. And every year since then, that list has grown and grown. And I think you can go look at the 
leading money list. And they're, I don't know how deep the number is now that earnings of a million dollars or more, it's not that special anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because, yeah, I mean, it's a million dollar purse or more, if not, you know, two million every single week. Yeah, but uh, as far as his game, I think my my thought is he should just shut it down, um, heal, do everything that he needs to do to get better. Um, As far as hitting the golf ball, there's, there's still very few that are as good or better than him. Right now it's Rory. Phil's right there, but he should just shut it down. My, you know, my opinion is he should shut it down, make the call to uh, Captain Watson for the Ryder Cup and say he's not going to play, uh, be an honorary captain or something like that so he can be there, but he, he should just shut it down. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Tim. I mean, at a certain point in time, your body is giving you problems. Um, you know, he's, he's getting older. Um, that's what happens. You know, I'm 42. I know when I turn 40, stuff just starts breaking down. You know, it's sad, sad, but true. Um, I was playing in with my, my five-year-old in the ocean yesterday and I have a stiff neck today. I mean, you know, (laughs) it shouldn't be that way. I'm in decent shape. It should not be that way. But when you, uh, you know, swing the way these guys do on the golf course, it, it takes a lot out of you. And, um, you know, it's interesting that you say, you know, everybody should kind of scratch Tiger a check because I haven't thought about it that way, but you're right. I mean, the amount of money and sponsorship dollars that he has created in the in the golfing world, um, TV money, endorsement money, it's crazy. I mean, Rory um, signed a $200 million deal with Nike. Thank you, Tiger. Just, just in the beginning of last year. And Tiger is the one who made... Golf for Nike, the Nike brand, is six hundred million dollar a year business. So, yep, Rory, maybe you should scratch Tiger a check. <laughs> um, you know, just give him ten percent. I mean, come on, what's what's twenty million out of the purse? You know, um, it, it is amazing. And what a what a great what a great uh, weekend for golf. If you if you watched it, what a great ending yesterday for Rory. I mean, it's special to to see that stuff. I got out on the golf course on Friday, my first time in a year. And um, I can tell you, Tim, I did not shoot one under like you did this weekend. <laughs> um, it was many over than one, but I uh, had a great time and um, enjoyed it. And I, I don't think I embarrassed myself on the go- golf course, which is just something I try to do. Just don't embarrass yourself, right? Yeah. Just get yeah. the ball in the yeah. air yeah. most of the time <laughs> and advance it down the fairway. So um, that's, that's, that's that. But uh, congratulations, Roy. Amazing stuff. So um, let's do a quick little market update here. Um, here we are on Monday, and uh, we got a little bit of green around the, uh, around the markets. Uh, Dow's up, NASDAQ's up, and S&P's up a little bit. The nice thing for interest rates, the bond market is staying pretty level. Um, Barb, if you, know, if you got some people out there that are buying a home and they're just entering escrow, um, you know, hopefully they're not the type that just keeps thinking interest rates are going to continue down because the chances of that are a lot slimmer than interest rates going up. So, right, you know, right. let's not get greedy, folks. I say it every time I'm on the air. Um, we're probably at the bottom of the barrel once again here. Just lock it in, be done, hire your movers, worry about putting on the electricity and getting your, your cable bill moved over more so than trying to beat the market on interest rate. But here's something that might help your interest rate. And it may not help right now, but, and Barb, I'm not sure if you saw this, but uh, FICO, which is the, uh, the main syndicator, the Fair Isaac Corporation, they're the ones that are behind basically what drives our credit scores. And, and I deal with this all the time. I mean, on a daily basis, I probably run on average, three credit reports a day. So I look at a lot of them, over a thousand a year, and um, looking at a lot of stuff. And a lot of times stuff's wrong. A lot of time people's scores are just not as high as they should be because of medical collections, other collections. But Ferris Isaac Bureau may finally get something right here. They are revamping the way that the scores are being modeled in, in lessening what medical debts um, will do to your credit score, which I think is amazing. It's wonderful news. It we is wonderful. We did hear about that, yes. Yeah. yes. It's a great thing. Um, 
it's it says that this change could advance your score for many people if you have a medical collection or a medical unpaid debt or a medical paid debt that's on there it could increase your score upwards up to 25 points now i'm going to say it's even going to be higher because i think they're probably doing an average of of what they think it will do or maybe they'll change their schematic because they can tweak it any way they want that's that's the crazy thing they can say huh hey, you know what let's turn it down a little bit let's make um the medical collections count more let's make medical collections count less so some people may only gain 10 points some may gain 25 but the beauty of this is that from an interest rate perspective let's say you're shopping for a car let's say you're shopping for a home interest rates are, are directly related to credit scores in a lot of a lot of ways yes. so you know you'll read in the in the newspaper you'll see ads on on TV for cars um, and and you'll see an interest rate being posted and in the fine print it's always for you know the most qualified buyer well what does that mean the most qualified buyer is the one with the 740 or the 760 credit score maybe it's even higher depending on the type of a car you're buying um, for for interest rates on on mortgages for conventional loans or jumbo loans interest rates are directly affected in an adverse way by credit scores so you can go down to a 620 credit score and still get the money to buy a home if you're looking at a conventional loan but if that's if you have a 620 you're going to be awfully punished compared to the person that has a 740 buying the same home and we're talking about it could be a half a percent three quarters of a percent difference in rate um, and it could be the difference of getting approved or not getting approved because when running these these um, credit scores and the loan through an automated underwriting engine if you have a 620 or even a 660 or a 670 and you're pushing debt to income ratios and things aren't exactly perfect you may not get that approved eligible so I think it's definitely going to help. Now, when is it all? When are you going to see it all happen? Um, in the fall. So when's the fall? Uh, you know, we're a few months away. But hopefully, in time, if you've been if you've been shut down in the past because of a medical collection or because your credit score just wasn't there, in just a few months from now. I mean, we're we're in August here. I don't know when it fall. Barb, do you know when fall I think officially, it's officially starts? Officially September. September. So, we've got one more month. so we're right there. Yeah. And I guarantee you, just like spring, when we get to fall, it's going to feel like summer. Right. Because this whole year has felt like summer, um, and that's why you pay the price to live in San Diego, exactly. this wonderful place, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do indeed. Yes. But now yeah. here's the other thing too. With this change, don't think that everybody out there has to take on this new um, reporting system because it's an update. And I'm sure that um, FICO is going to charge people, companies, lenders for the updated version of their credit reporting system. Okay. I'm sure they are. Yes. So if something, if you still think you're getting adversely affected down the road and somebody has run your credit and it was the same as it was before, maybe they just didn't upgrade. So we'll have to see when the official start date is. but. Um, that it's really good news. I'm really happy to see this, and it definitely can help you in the future if you've had problems in the past. When we come back, Barb Fisher, hometown realtors with Remax, is in the studio today, and we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff in the real estate game that you need to know. It's your lunch hour, 1700 ESPN. If you would like free advice from Mr. Credit, just call or text 619-786-7853. That's 619-786-7853. Welcome back to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. And today it's Macro Monday on ESPN Radio 1700. Welcome back. It is your Lunch Hour 1700 ESPN Mr. Credit. It is JJ in the hot seat today, Synergy One Lending. If you have any questions you want to talk to our guest today, you have any questions for me, just go to askjjnow.com. Uh, shoot me a call, email, text. And we will make sure that we uh, put you in touch with our guest today, Barb Fisher, REMAX Hometown 
realtors. And I'm excited, Barb, because, you know, what we do sometimes is we reach out to the people that are going to come on the show and we ask them, hey, what's, you know, what's some stuff that's relevant out there? You're in the marketplace on a day in, day out basis. This is what you do for a living. What, are, what do you want to talk about? What are some relevant things? And you threw back a laundry list that I couldn't even take anything off of it. So we're going to try to cover it all okay, great. because I love mm. every single thing that you put on here. And it shows the expertise that you have in the business. And that's why we bring um, folks on like you to make everybody smarter. So let's just jump right into it. Okay. Just out of curiosity, how, how long have you been in the real estate business? A little over 15 years. A little over, so that's yes. a long time. So you exactly. got in it before the last sort of boom kind of run right. up and um, just off the, off the tail of the last sort of downside. Exactly. Um, so you've, yes. you've seen it all here, which is which is really nice. So one thing that, that you kind of wrote down was emotions versus economics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And why Econ 101 usually wins out. Now, Econ 101, for those of you who haven't taken the class, it's, you know, beginner class in college, right? right. Usually you take it your, your first couple years. Um, so what, what do you mean by this? Well, simple laws like supply and demand. I mean, that always rules the world. You know, whether, and there's age old laws like, of course, sellers, no matter what you're selling, you always want to sell it for more. And buyers, no matter what you're buying, you want to buy it for less. So you've got that dynamic working versus all the emotions. When you're a buyer, it's thinking about what your childhood home was like and what you liked about it, what you didn't, how you want to recreate it. Maybe you're getting married, you're starting a family, you're all these dreams are piling on. And you've got that aspect, which is pure emotion. And on the seller side, you've got, uh, You've got, well, it's emotional equity is what I like to call it, because think of the things that happened at your house. You know, maybe your kids were born or your daughter was married there or you rebuilt half the house. So when you set your list price as a seller, you tend to want to set it higher because you're adding in all that emotional equity that your buyer really doesn't care about at all because it has nothing to do with them. So you're coming at it from two different points of view. So what I like to do to help people wade through this is to take it off of real estate and think of something like the stock market. Like I think Apple's at what, 42 or something like that. Are they at 85? They're somewhere. Anyway, let's just say they're 85 right now. And you may, let's say you have to sell your Apple stock. You know, you need the money for something else. And this is kind of a seller's point of view. I need to sell my house because I need the money for something else. Well, the market being your buyer, they don't care about that. If they open the Wall Street Journal and whatever stock is selling for 82, that's what it sells for. So, and they may want a house that's, you know, maybe they can only afford a house at a certain price, but, you know, we all want more. We always want more, yes. So, it's that ongoing battle. So, I always encourage people to wear two hats. You know, you can, when I show you a home, you can go in it and fantasize all you want about the furniture will look good here and the barbecue we're going to have out, we'll build, you know, build the outdoor kitchen. But when it comes down to it, you know, can you afford this and do you want the payments that go along with it? Yeah. Because from the lending world, you know that, you know, you will give somebody their top dollar <laughs> but it's up to them if they right. want to spend that much and a lot of times you give people their top dollar and they go and find something that's higher oh because yes of that course. is that of is course. the way it works well, right? that's the rule of open houses yes. we all go to open houses that are fifty thousand right. hundred thousand above what we can afford and why but is that <laughs> is that human nature i think we're beyond the econ 101 we, human nature 101 well, yeah we need yeah. to do a psychology <laughs> class on that one when when your lender tells you that your cap is at a certain mm-hmm. level, remember mm-hmm. that and uh, right. stay within the cap because it's right. never fun to get emotionally tied to the house that you can't afford. Right. Um, so what, you know, looking at that Econ 101, supply and demand, mm-hmm. how is, I mean, right now, it seems like the supply has gone up a little bit. How are you finding the demand being kind of an equalizer and just keeping pace with it? Well, it depends on the price point. We're finding that Roughly at 400 or under, we still have multiple offers yep. on everything that's well priced. Yeah. So, and what buyers, it's important for them to realize let's say they lose out on a bid because some people don't like to go to bid over. You know, real estate is unlike any shopping experience. You go to Target and buy a $20 pair of jeans, you go to the register, they're still $20. But here, it's like suggested list price. Right. And some people get very upset. They said, well, they said it was 400000 and now it's four twenty-five. And I always assure them that the appraisal will protect them because 
you know, if the lender doesn't believe it's worth more than 400, they're not, you know, there has to be a renegotiation. That's right. And I'm right? glad to see something that, that we, I, I haven't seen in a while, but um, it seems like removing appraisal contingencies up front yes. is kind of gone away mm-hmm. again. Um, it, mm-hmm. it came back for about 12 to 18 months where if you wanted to get into a house, you, you almost had to relinquish that appraisal contingency, which I'm a huge Oh. I think it's a disservice to yes. everybody in the transaction. I really do. I think it's unfair. Um, and it just gives people an excuse to get out of the deal in a different way. Oh, exactly. Yeah. They uh, still have the inspection contingency. Right. So yeah. it's yeah. just it's just just, <laughs> you know, protect everybody in the transaction and leave that in there. So, you know, when you talk about the econ one on one and you, you mention people that, you know, want the deal, mm-hmm. right? Um <laughs> what you know, yeah. uh, you, you work with them, you see them. Let's talk about that. I mean, it, you know, you refer to it as the the D word. Oh right. right? Well, yes. And yes. I've I've said to people because I, you know, one of the best qualities you can get with a real estate agent is somebody who's just honest with you. It's like tough love, <laughs> you know. So I have said to some people, do you want a deal or do you want a house? You know, and for an investor, they want a deal and they need to keep their costs at 10 percent, 15, whatever. And that's that's more OK for them because they live by that money and what they've set out, their pro forma and everything. But with a regular buyer who's looking for a shelter, you know, as well as an investment, that makes a difference because it's the house. It's a you know, we're talking a, a long term commitment. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. And, yeah. And, and why do you think I mean. What is it about people that believe? I mean, you, you talk about the suggested retail price. Has the real estate community set ourselves up for this? I mean, in time? I mean, is that what, what, what has happened? I mean, you have price ranges, right? right. So, you know, from 400 to 450. Right. Um, you know, you, you, you set the price of 425, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're paying more than that. I mean, exactly. why? What's the mentality? Where does that stem from? You know, the consumer does always want the deal. For right. the most part. Yes. Um, but why? Why do why? you think? I think that's part of our culture right now. I mean, I'm a consumer and I want a deal, y- you know, uh, no matter what. And it's just kind of a word that's slipped in and everybody is looking for a deal. And, and you know, you go online, there's deal of the day for this yeah. and Groupon and this, that and the other. And we're all looking for that. And I think part of it's the economy. We know that we need to be more frugal and save money. And so a deal is a good thing. But you know, I encourage people to step back and and think of at what cost. Right. You know, like, like for example, if you're hiring a plumber and you go online, you maybe find five plumbers and one's going to be $30 an hour and the rest are 60 Well, you know, most people are going to hire the $30 an hour guy and pray that nothing goes <laughs> wrong. But, and, you know, I find that people are willing to pay for an expert once something goes wrong, it's like, uh oh, now I'm in trouble. Right. So the thirty dollar guy screws up and then, you know, you've got a, a very bad pipe or water in your kitchen floor. So now you hire the guy who really knows what he's doing. And then he's more worth it to you. So the deal you kinda okay, I'll take the expert over the deal. Yeah. So and and, and what is the I mean, speaking of deal, I mean let's say you're a buyer right now mm-hmm. and because I know, I mean this is this is I've seen it. I've had buyers that, you know, in two thousand eleven they were looking to buy and right. they didn't because they wanted the deal. <laughs> right. And right. they, you know, kind of pulled out of the market. And then 2012, they were back saying, you know, well, I'm still looking for a deal, underbidding prices by 50000 a 100000 missing out once again. And they still haven't purchased. And, and mm-hmm. since that 2011 time, they've missed out on, you know, a 30% equity gain, oh my gosh, probably, yes. if not yes, more. Yes. And how do you educate people to, not anticipate, I mean, to, to just pay for what the house is worth. You know, I think that's a tough one. I mean, because some people, you know, if it's been two, three years and they still haven't bought, I they're not really wanting to. <laughs> they're there's not buyers. Some, there's a, exactly. There's a, there's a problem there. Well, like you said, I mean, just like last year, 24% up across the board, that threw a lot of people out. Yes. That And it's sad because you can see it coming and you know it's going to happen if they don't act, but they're afraid. And, you know, now we're back to emotions again. There's so many, you know, people are afraid of making a financial mistake. And because we all know it's a huge, you know, it's half a million dollars for a yes. house. Yep. So I think there's that. And there's always the chatter in the background, you know, because when somebody's buying, 
you know, or selling. They talk to everybody and they get all these opinions. And most of the people don't know what they're they're not the experts they're talking with. Well, then that water cooler talk can make or break <laughs> yes. your own deal out there. So be careful who you talk to. I mean, make sure that you're talking to the experts. That's why we bring them in the studio today. We have Barb Fisher. That's who you've been listening to. Remax Hometown Realtors. And real easy way to find Barb is barbfisher.com and throw a C in the middle of fish for the other spelling. It's barb, F-I-S-C-H-E-R.com. You can find her right online. She can help you out. And if you have any questions, you can just reach out to Barb directly, 619-339-1396, 619-339-1396. When we come back from our break, we're going to continue this. Um, Why do really smart people make really dumb mistakes in the real estate world? And some other great things you need to hear in your lunch hour, 1700 ESPN. If you would like free advice from Mr. Credit, just call or text 619-786-7853. That's 619-786-7853. Welcome back to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. And today it's Macro Monday on ESPN Radio 1700. Welcome back. It is your Lunch Hour on Mr. Credit. It's JJ John Giroux, Synergy One Lending in the hot seat today with Barb Fisher, hometown realtors from Remax. And before the break, we were talking about just, you know, emotions versus economics and, uh, you know, the, the, the all fatal D word, the deal word um, that can help make or break what you're trying to accomplish and possibly buying a home. But Barb, this is, this is an interesting one. You know, really smart people that you just, you know, they have the brains, they got the, the education behind them. They make really bad decisions. And what are some of the bad decisions that you see out there in the real estate world right now? Well, a lot of it is uh, people just waiting. Like you were mentioning before, people who started looking in 2011 and are still looking. And it's it's so sad because the rest of us know how much money they would have made for now or what they would have not been paying rent or whatever. Or sellers just listing their price, their house too high because of all that emotional equity. And, you know, and it's just, again, back to supply and demand. If you list your house on the lower side, you'll get so many offers that it'll it'll inch its way up anyway. Yeah. I mean, when so, you, so when you go, I mean, because your business is split up and you work with buyers, you work mm-hmm. with sellers, you work with out-of-towners that right. are looking for investment properties or second homes, kind of cover the basis. When you're sitting down with a seller, and and I think, you know, it's especially in this time of the year, it's supposed to be the hot in the summertime, right? right. I mean, our house right. is going to fly off the shelf. One of those things is listing it at the right price point. But, you know, People might be interviewing you against other people. Exactly. And somebody yeah. else is going to come in and say, you know what? I can sell your house for 100000 more, 50000 more, whatever that number is. Mm-hmm. And people see the economics behind that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they have that emotional equity that's making their decision. I mean, how do you as a professional kind of get people off that train and make it look more like just a simple business decision? Take the emotions out. Well, I think sometimes just having all your comps ready in in black and white on paper and people either choose to look at those like if their neighbor's house just sold for 450 and they want to sell theirs for five i mean you know if they're not going to see reality they could be difficult to work with you know in other ways so you know that interview is always a mutual thing you're both kind of interviewing each other to see if you're a fit for each other and the philosophy and you know as a professional i want somebody who trusts me and trusts my opinion of the comps and and when they don't see that you know sometimes they just have to kind of go stumbling through with somebody else yeah yeah. well but you're right people will inflate prices and but you know you you mentioned earlier the price ranges and i i think those can be beneficial because that is a way for a seller to kind of put their toe in the water and feel like they're not losing money and of course every buyer well why wouldn't we pay the lower price well you know and just statistically they end up selling for the mid mid range and i think that's a good comfort zone for the seller well, I know yeah. that, you know, from an online search and things like that, I mean, more it opens the home up to more viewers. It does. Right, with the You're price right. range. So, yeah. you know, for those that wonder why they do the price ranges, I think years ago when it first came to fruition in the real estate business, 
The reason why was because, you know, you, you, you're sitting with your real estate agent. You're saying, hey, you know, we're looking in the $500,000 range. And if, if somebody has a price range of four fifty to, you know, five twenty five, dollars your range that you're, you're looking for opens you up to more viewing. Exactly. And that's, that's yeah. just the bottom line. So don't think that the low range is where you're, they're going to sell the house. I mean, right. exactly. it's, it's, not, exactly. it's not what the seller is looking for. And I think you make a good point statistically. It's probably right in the middle of the mm-hmm. range. Um, but that's working with the right real estate agent. We have Barb Fisher in the studio today, barbfisher.com. And that is Fisher with a C if you're looking for her online. Very important that you spell it correctly. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> right. I'm sure that gets misspelled all the time. So what, you know, one of the things that in I think in business and in life that there are things that we can control mm-hmm. and there are things that we cannot control. Right. And in the real estate world, whether you're buying or selling, I mean, what are you supposed to worry about as a buyer or a seller? Well, a lot uh, for buyers, for example, it's the competition, like especially in that, say, 400 and under price range, it's just fierce. And so if there are 20 offers on a home and you're one of them and maybe yours didn't make it, there's 19. Well, then you'd be number 19. There's 18 other people (laughs) who are still in the mix. And chances are they're, say, looking in South County or East County. So there's a pack of people all looking for the same thing. And we've got to go through that. So just to put your best offer in at first and I understand how hard that is because you think, "Uh uh-oh, what if I could have gotten it for $10,000 less? And that's when a conversation with your lender, okay, you know, how many Starbucks a month equals the $10,000 price difference? Or what could we give up for that? And, you know, it's funny because people will sometimes ask, well, how many offers are there? And I'll I'll find out at the beginning because if there's five other offers, you want to come in very aggressively but i still caution people there could be zero offers now and two hours later there could be three of them right so yeah. and who yeah. knows i mean yeah. uh, you you it's it's not just because you put an offer in on the table it doesn't right. mean you as a listing agent needs to look at it and your seller is going to review it that minute i right. mean you may give it 72 hours or five days to get offers in on the home before right. you review them all yes. right yeah. so i mean you, you don't know and, and you make a very valid point. I mean, go in with the strength right out of the gate. I mean, why play games? Why look for that deal? Because you might lose your dream house over 5000 bucks. Oh, that's tragic. It yes, is. that really is. And it happens yeah, all the time. It does. And I see yeah. it over time. And these are the same, some of these people are the ones that, you know, have been kind of kicked to the side in this marketplace year after year after year. Mm-hmm. They've gotten very frustrated. Well, I'll tell you what, you're probably working with the wrong person that's not guiding you the right way. That's why that's why we bring the professionals into the studio. This is just the bottom line. I mean, on the Mr. Credit Show, we bring the professionals in so you have somebody to reach out to. You want to reach out to Barb, here's her number, 619-339-1396, 619-339-1396. Give it to somebody you know who needs it. Write it down for yourself when you're ready to buy or sell. So here's something that... Looking at real estate, um, we all have a different understanding of what you do as a real right. estate agent for mm-hmm. us. And, and that's why people try to do it themselves, yes. I think, right? Yeah. Sellers, they try to just sell it themselves. But, you know, what, what do you do? What, what is your magic point um, for a buyer, for a seller? I mean, people, people want to know, like, hey, Barb, you know what? I'm gonna put. I'm gonna go in fifty thousand dollars low, and just work your magic. Just just go do your job, right? That's uh, yes. is that is yes. that what yeah. you're? I mean, uh, that's not what you do, yeah. right? You know, there's no uh, magic spell out there. You don't have a wand that you're gonna wave over this the the, right. the listing agent. I mean, what what should people expect out of their real estate agent? Well, I think number one, well, it's a, it's a combination of honesty and knowledge. You know, and willingness to find out what you don't know, because none of us, one of my favorite agents has been in the business 40 years, and she always says, none of us know everything. You know, you just have to know where to find out. So, um, you know, with that, it's it's knowledge of the market, and it's just being honest and saying, look, you know, you're not going to, lowball offers just simply will not work. And, you know, there's some people like investors who want you to write 100 offers, mm-hmm. and, and 
Personally, that's not what I do. I'm sure there's some people who will do that. But, you know, my job is to get them the house at the lowest price possible without losing it. And those those are really key words, the without losing it. Like you mentioned earlier, you don't want to lose it over $5,000. Yeah, definitely. So it's a long-term strategy. And, th- and that's why I'm so grateful for the show, because it combines finances with real estate, because they're merged. They're joined yeah. at the hip. Yeah, definitely. And that's so. that's the thing. I mean, make sure you know where you can afford. I think that's exactly. the biggest thing. Yeah. And when you, you are getting pre-approved, I mean, save yourself some room. I mean, you know the top end of it, but save yourself some room mentally. Take the emotion and yeah. save yourself some financial room. So when you do find that that home, that's just the dream home, and you do need to go up seventy five hundred dollars to get the house in your offer price. I mean, you remember this is this is somewhere you're going to live, you're going right. to reside, you're going to create the, your own emotional memories and emotional equity down the road. Exactly. And yes. you will yeah. be that seller at a certain point in time. When we come back. We're going to talk about requests for repairs, home inspections, um, because this is a, it's a big thing. I see it on my end on the lending space. Barb sees it on her end from buyers and um, on her listings as well. It's your lunch hour. We have Barb Fisher in the studio with Hometown Realtors. When we come back, we'll make you smarter than the next guy. If you would like free advice from Mr. Credit, just call or text 619-786-7853. That's 619-786-7853. Welcome back to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. And today it's Macro Monday on ESPN Radio 1700. Welcome back to your Macro Monday and your lunch hour, Mr. Credit. We are streaming live at mrcredit.tv. It is JJ Synergy One Lending. You can always go to askjjnow.com. You can reach me by email, text, phone, whatever your choice of communication is. And we'll make sure that we put you in touch with our guest, Barb Fisher, today. Um, or just answer a question. If you have a question about something we're talking about, we'll make sure to get you the information you need to make the right decision. Before the break, we were talking about just do's and don'ts and real estate and games and prices and deals that you're not going to get. Here's one thing that I see over and over, and I'm on the lending side, Barb, as you know. So I get the contracts and then, you know, the in, the inspection gets done and then paperwork comes over and it's something called the request for repairs. Let's talk about this topic here. How the request for repairs, home inspections, and you say they've gotten just completely out of hand. Mm-hmm. And I agree with you 100%. Let's talk about that. Okay. Um, you know, the process, you know, you enter escrow. Typically, you get a home inspection right, as a buyer. Right. Yes. And then that home inspection comes back. And what happens after that? Well, after the person reads through the 72-page report, which is enough to scare anybody. You know, it is. And a lot of it I just attribute to the litigiousness of, you know, the state of California and the way everybody. And the the home inspector is trying. Of course, it's their job to protect the buyer and lay out everything that could go wrong is wrong. But, you know, the buyer's not buying a new house. And it's and I pre-warn folks, you know, and especially the flips. Oh, my heavens. The flips, you know, of course, are all eye candy. And the plumbing, the major systems have not been taken care of. Plumbing, electric, et cetera. And a lot of the inspection reports focus on that, of course, because, you know, it looks serious. pretty from the outside. Exactly. Yeah. And you can't see the roof from the street. So but, you know, when you climb up there, it's. It's not so pretty. So, you know, what happens is the buyer goes into a state of shock, basically, even though the inspector, the agent, everyone has told them, you know, just this is not a new home and expect these kind of things. But it's when you read page after page of even if they're little things, it just in your mind, it. it yeah, do you see dollar signs adding up? Well, exactly. Potential, and potential, that's important. Yeah. And, and we want our buyers to know, OK, well, this is, you know, a long term plan. You know, do you think you could handle these repairs in? You know, mm-hmm. five years, 10 years, whatever. And uh, a good inspector will help them kind of, okay, ballpark prices as well. So, 
you know, I always, even though everything is stated, you know, as is, you know, no repairs, I always feel it's really important to at least ask the seller, unless they're a bank, and of course the bank's middle name is no, you know, when it's a short sale or foreclosure, so they won't do any repairs, but to ask the seller to do any health and safety issues. Okay. So because that's, most, so yeah. that's, those are the important things. Because exactly. Because I mean, my thing yeah. is, what do you ask for? So um, it's usually electrical. Okay. You know, things like that. You know, if the M word appears, you know, and usually, you know, inspectors don't say that because they're not qualified mold inspectors but if there's a fear of that or you know evidence um you know people can get as many inspections as they want so you could get a mold inspection exactly. if that were the case yes yep. or yes. a roof inspection if right. you want something yes yep. and i've had people recently in the past few years people have gotten five inspections they've gotten chimney inspections in roof and electrical and plumbing so let so, me ask you i mean whose financial pocket does the, do the these buyer. inspections fall on it's the all buyer to the buyers yeah okay so it's, yeah. it's it's important to think that i mean one thing to, I think, remember is if you're looking at a home that was built in 1939, mm -hmm. you may want to spend or you may choose to spend you know, up to 1500 bucks, something like that. I mean, 350 for an inspection, 450 right. for an inspection. One may lead to another, but it's, it's up to you to do that due diligence as a buyer. But know yeah. that... You know, you're buying a used product. Exactly. Right. Yes. I mean, at the end of yeah. the day, it's it's not a brand new home. Mm -hmm. Things are there's a maintenance part of home ownership that ah, yes. comes into play, right? Insurance uh -huh. companies expect you to maintain your home, right? To keep it insured as well. So, not that the seller hasn't done the maintenance, uh -huh. but there are things that you know are only going to last so long, mm -hmm. right? Um, now, I see this. You know, it's it's one of those things you walk through. The buyer walks through and 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 a screen is bent or um you know a door handle is loose or something like that i mean are those things to worry about oh definitely not okay. no and and you would i mean those are such simple fixes even yep. non-mechanical people can usually handle those i don't know i don't yep. know about oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> i know my father-in-law is not listening but i can tell you oh, my mother-in-law would good. definitely say that he cannot fix it he cannot anything. okay yes okay. yes they're backies but. and hopefully they won't listen to the the link afterwards <laughs> um but <laughs> yeah sorry about That's that funny. pops um, um, so, so one thing that you had mentioned is, is if you're buying a short sale or a mm. bank owned property, oh, they're yeah. not doing anything they for you. You know, and like Bank of America only has a $500 uh, termite repair, you know, limit with VA buyers that has to be taken care of. Yeah. Especially. So, yeah. you know, and they, cause in most parts of the country, termites aren't as big as they are here. So you can't even tent a house for five hundred dollars. Yeah, you're not going to you know? get very far with that at all. You I mean, won't. The price of lumber, so, or even you know, oh, replacing some two by fours and things like that. Right. Um, so I mean, that's 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 definitely something. And I know that you know the short sale listings are down. Right. Mm -hmm. There's not as many mm -hmm. of them out there. Um, the bank owned properties definitely are less out there. Yes. But remember that as a buyer, you're not you you can't go and ask the bank to repair these things. They're just going to say no. They'll move on right. to a different buyer, yeah, right? They can. And and it's a chance to just lose that perfect house that you right. think you're getting a deal on over maybe something as simple as a, a couple hundred dollar repair. Right, okay. right. That's, yes. that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. So let's, I mean, one thing that, you know, you have different phases of this deal, right? Mm -hmm. You know, as, as a buyer or a seller even. Um, you, you, you have the, the contract part, right? Right. And, and part of that is negotiation. Yes, right? your upfront negotiation. And, yeah. and would you say that that's a, a, something that should just be, I mean, I, I, I think we touched on it, but just put your best foot forward mm -hmm. and be done with it. Yes. I mean, yeah. if you don't get it and your best foot's forward. Well, and people get weary when there's seven counter offers. I mean, they're both, you know, they're ready to strangle each other and they haven't even gotten into escrow. <laughs> so, you know, clean offers, you know, not asking, you know, over asking for things, but, you know, standing for your own ground. I mean, negotiation, neither party gets everything they want, but they both get most of what they want. And those are the pleasant escrows where they're willing to work together. I like that. Yeah. And and think of that. That's a very simple rule. You have two peop two parties working together neither is going to get everything they want, mm -mm. right? I mean, yeah. that's the thing. And when, you, and when you create that balance, it's a fun process. And I see yeah. it all the time. The clean contracts, the fair request for repairs. Exactly, um, yes. Those are things, you know, an appraisal, if it doesn't come in, the seller's willing to give a little bit, the buyer might be willing to give a little bit. Right. Um, those are the things that you need to, you need to 
go into it with an open mind, take the emotions out, and look at it like a business decision. Um, one thing that we talk about, and, and you know, we've just been blessed with the most amazing weather this year. Mm, I mean, it's uh-huh. just in San Diego, and we, we do pay a premium for it. We pay a price for it. Um, but how important is location? Yeah. It's still everything, yeah. you know, and it's amazing with technology what it is. You know, you can do Google Street View and save yourself a tank of gas, you know, and because some, you know, will drive up to see a house and someone, oh, my heavens, like two blocks away, it's not the way they want it. Right. And if they just maybe look at a, you know, 10 block circumference and just check it out that way or an aerial, I mean, there could be a trailer park behind it or industry or it could be on a steep hill and just pre-check I, you know, I have a, a theory that uh, today's consumer, no matter what you're buying, and we're armed and dangerous because there's so much data, but we always need an interpreter. So a person buying or selling, they need a great lender, a great agent to interpret all that, or else it's just a bunch of figures that you don't know how to work it in your favor then. Right. And, so. and even looking at a Google map or something like that, you may not know that um, you know what's behind you is sold and they're going to rebuild or something. Exactly. You just don't know. So yeah. that is why you need the experts on your side. You can't do it alone. And, mm-hmm. and I think you know that. You can't do it alone. That's why we bring the experts into the studio to make you smarter than the next person. Here We have Barb Fisher, REMAX Hometown Realtors, in the studio today. And Barb, I know time goes by fast. It does. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. We will have you back because we didn't cover all the ground. If you want to get in touch with Barb, barbfisher.com. F-I-S-C-H-E-R on the Fisher part, and it's B-A-R-B. So barbfisher.com, 619-339-1396. If you have any questions, you want to get in touch with me, didn't write that down, just go to askjjnow.com. I know we made you smarter than everybody else on this Macro Monday today. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your lunch hour on the Mr. Credit Radio Show. It's JJ Synergy One Lending, 1700 ESPN. If you would like to contact Mr. Credit or access any free offers mentioned on the show, just go to mrcredit.org. That's mrcredit.org.